Hi everyone. I know I don't usually show my face very much, but today I wanted to just give a brief explanation on this video for Two Tiny Treasures uh, channel followers. Um, this video is going to be duplicated on a separate channel if some of you already follow that one called Alpaca My Yarn. But those that are mainly on this channel, I wanted to introduce this craft to you. And then if you're interested in it, the majority of the videos pertaining to this craft, which is called Sashiko, it's a Japanese, traditional Japanese um, upcycling type of craft that is going to be on my separate channel on Alpaca My Yarn. So I just wanted to give that explanation here at the beginning of this video for those of you that follow on Two Tiny Treasures so that if you're here for Cricut and my journals and stickers and scrapbooking, that's not changing on this channel. That will be still the majority of the videos for this particular channel. So those of you who are general crafters like me and just enjoy dabbling in the fiber arts as well, I thought it might be something you would enjoy. And so feel free to go over onto that other channel and check that one out as well. Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm wanting to introduce you to a traditional Japanese type of embroidery called sashiko. To give you a little bit of background about sashiko, first I'll show you a book that I find for beginners is amazing. It's the first book that I personally purchased for sashiko. It is called Simply Sashiko, and it is made by the company called Tuttle. The amazing thing about Tuttle, to give you a little bit of background about this publisher, is um, he originally had a publishing company here in the States prior to World War II. After World War II, he discovered a whole other market in Asia of those ones wanting to learn English. And so he opened publishing and imported books to Japan in particular. Um, but then he spread, his publishing company has spread into all the um, Asian countries, including like the, where this book was, I think, printed in Singapore. Um, I want to say Taiwan, Hong Kong, um, Korea. Tuttle Publishing has brought a lot of the cra arts and crafts that were predominantly only written in those Asian languages. Their publishing company has translated those patterns and instructions and brought them here to the States. So this is a great publishing company. If you're interested in Asian crafts in general, um, you might really enjoy looking up this particular publishing company and a lot of their books are available on Amazon. So this is an example of traditional sashiko stitching. They were specific designs and patterns that you know, have become known, like this one here, as being very traditional Japanese. The wave, um, this, I forget the English names, but they're very, very traditional stitching patterns. So how this developed was hundreds of years ago, I'm trying to think of the proper term to use these days, the, I guess you could call the lower class or the poor people, of the country could not afford and did not have access to purchase clothing very easily. So at this time period in Japan, many were wearing what's called indigo fabric. It's thinner than jean fabric, thinner than denim that we have here in the States. I can describe it more like quilting fabric, 100% cotton, not super thick, but you know, if you layer it, it can get warmer. So sashiko stitching provided two purposes for this particular group of people in Japan hundreds of years ago. One, it was a way of strengthening the fabric so that it wouldn't tear or rip to begin with. Secondly, it provided extra warmth, especially when you get north of Tokyo. Tokyo can get cold too. I would describe Tokyo's climate much like Dallas, Texas. It can get very hot with humidity, like Houston, but it can get extremely cold in the winter as well, and they might 
occasionally get snow. But especially from the northern Honshu Island and Hokkaido, it's very, very, very cold, like Russia cold. So this was a way of staying warm in those winter months as well. So in the States today, we might call this kind of mending visible mending, slow stitching, and used for the purposes of upcycling. So I think those were the terms that, you know, if you searched on social media here in the States, those might be some of the other terms that you find this under. Now, I'll be honest, my grandmother tried to introduce this to me. I want to say I was like eight years old. We were there for the summer, um, almost all three months of summer vacation, and she was trying to teach me so many crafts that summer. She was just so excited I was there, and she wanted to teach me all the crafts. So she started with origami, um, you would say origami here in the States. So she started with origami. She tried to teach me crochet, loom knitting, beading, temari balls. Temari is te is hand and mari is ball. Um, so she tried to teach me these hand wrapped balls um, to make. And she tried to teach me sashko. Now sashko is in the very beginning, which is she was trying to teach me the proper method called unshin, she was trying to teach me how to get the rhythm of stitching properly with sashko. And that introductory step for beginners is, I will admit, extremely boring. We would call it here a running stitch. It's just making straight lines and getting that stitch pattern even. And the way to get it even is by getting this muscle memory in your hand and rhythm in your head down together at the same time. And so all I was being taught at that time were straight lines. So I got very bored with it and I quit on my poor grandmother. And now that she's 96 years old, I wish she could still come back and teach me all those things she was trying to teach me back then. So now I'm having to teach myself. So I'm wanting to share that with you. This has a great list of beginner tools to get. That's where I learned to get what tools I needed. And honestly, the nice thing about Sashko for beginners is everything you need can fit in a very small pouch like this one. So this particular pouch I got at Hobby Lobby. Um, you can find a gajillion pouches just like it on Amazon. I'll try to find something similar since I don't think they sell online. So I'll try to find something similar. I'll link all the Sashko products that I've purchased off of Amazon below. Now those are affiliate links, so if you do choose to use them, they may pay me a small commission if you choose to use those links. But again, it doesn't cost you another penny at all. All right, so let's get into it. So maybe the first thing that's going to interest you is to actually look for some pattern kits. So when my mom was in Japan last month, she actually picked this one up for me. So a company you might search for is called Olympus. Olympus is kind of like our version of Singer here in the States. They're just an old established a company in Japan of fiber crafts. Um, also Clover is a Japanese company. So most of my supplies to actually do the work are Clover brand and those are from Japan, but the thread and the fabrics that I'm using are from Olympus. And so this is Sashiko, Sashiko. So it means little stabs. So Ko is also used for like children or so anything that's that's little and small. So these are some coasters. And in this kit, it comes with really everything you need. This is the Sashko thread. It comes with a needle and two coasters. This is a great beginner project. I'm going to demo it on this channel so that you know how to do um, the basics behind Sashko. In particular, this method is teaching the curved lines. So there's straight line methods, there's curved line methods, and there's grid. It's very geometric in nature, which is why it appeals to me. Um, I love drawing, and that's really what I was more interested in back when I was a kid. And um, I initially started in 
drafting and architecture in high school and through college. So I was one of those students that was the last person in class, literally, to convert over to the computer version of AutoCAD because I loved drawing the math. And I think that is what appeals to me so much about Seshko is just being able to get out the ruler again and draw the lines and do the angles and do the circles and it's amazing. So if you're that kind of nerd like me, you will enjoy drawing Seshko. But for beginners, you don't have to go that far. They have pre-printed kits like this that they've done all the work for you already. And so I'll be demonstrating these as well. So again, needle, thread, coasters, very small project and fits in the bag. So I've started doing more crafting in the car because here in Dallas, I don't know about your area, but traffic has just gotten horrendous. And I feel like I waste so much time in traffic. I wanna be productive doing something, but it also has another benefit, which my husband probably appreciates. Then I can't complain about his driving either, which is like a pet peeve. So keeps my mind occupied off of anything going on around me. So another item that you'll need are the needles. That didn't really show you anything, did it? So this is a needle case with a magnetic bottom. I love these. Those needles aren't getting lost, especially when I'm in the car. The last thing I wanna do is be chasing needles all over the floorboard of my car. So these needles are not just any kind of needles. These are specifically Sashko needles not to be confused with regular embroidery needles. That's because you carry the stitch much further and the thread is much thicker. So I'll put a link below and I'll put a photo here specifically of what these look like so that you can make sure to buy the right kind. I like to buy an assorted pack because the longer needles I use for straight lines, the shorter needles are for curved patterns. Another essential item are grip scissors. So this one is by a Japanese company called Kohana. Actually, they buy from artisans in Japan. So these are silk thread grip scissors, but you can find still good quality ones even here on Amazon. The nice thing with grip scissors like these opposed to regular scissors is you are able to get flush with the fabric to be able to trim them after you've treated Sashko in water. Um, the interesting thing with Sashko thread in particular is the twist. And with that twist, you do not always have to use a knot like you would in traditional sewing or traditional embroidery because the way the thread twists and wraps around itself when you overlap inside of the garment causes it to not apply on itself. Um, we'll get into that in the other videos, but that's why these kind of clippers are great because it allows the front side of your fabric, um, I'm sorry, the back side of your fabric to look as good as your front side, which is kind of the goal with Sashko because back then they did not have the money or resources as well to double side their stitches so they couldn't cover up ugly stitch work. The stitching was going to, going to show both on the front and the back side and that's true Sashko stitching. Now some of the modern projects that people make they'll put like an inner lining inside of a bag or things like that and kind of cover up those knots or hanging threads and not have to worry about all the clipping. Um, but true you know Sashko if you do like the dishcloths you'll want to trim off those threads. Another handy thing to have is a seam ripper. So I got this one on Amazon. It's from Clover, very sharp, one of the best ones. I love the handle on this. Um, I'm able to get a good grip on it. Some of them are super skinny um, or they're super big. So this one for me is just the right size. Um, so I love this seam ripper. Another item I carry in the car is this little macaroon. I know it looks kind of unrelated, but 
what it does is one side in particular is magnetic. So, you know, especially in the car, if I put the needle down or whatever with the thread, it's more, th more than likely, which it's happened, <laughs> it's going to get lost in the car seat. So I love this because I can set it down on my lap, I can easily find it, I set it on the dashboard, you know, I can set it down and easily find my needle and my needle doesn't get lost very easily. So you can do it one of two ways. You can keep this out and, you know, stick it on there. It'll stay on that as well. Um, but I usually like to pack my case of all the needles away and I just use this for my one needle. Now supposedly the center part is for sharpening the needle when it gets dull, but all of mine are so new at this point, I haven't had to use that part. Now another important part for Sashko is the right type of thimble. So the most common thimble you'll see is this one here. So I forget the brand of this one. Um, I originally found it on Brooklyn Haberdashery um, and I originally bought it from there but I already managed to lose one of these. So that's just a warning. You're going to lose these thimbles. Don't get too attached and keep your resource because you never know when you'll have to buy another one like I did. This is already my second one. So this one I bought from an Etsy seller. I'll try to link her below. She has a lot of Japanese products as well. But as well on Amazon, you can get a very inexpensive one that's the same quality. It's just silver instead of this bronze color. Um, you can get that on Amazon from Clover. So I'll link it below. Also, this is super handy. This has been my favorite one so far. With Sashko, you might push the needle two different ways. One, you might push the needle. So one method of pushing the needle with Sashko is holding it this way and running your stitch through the fabric. Um, as I try to stab myself here. And so this really protects your hand right here. So this is another way you might hold it. And as you can see, the needle can sit here and you'll still be able to get the momentum and push that you need without stabbing yourself. So that's amazing. Olympus also makes one. Um, they have this one. It doesn't last as well from what I've seen of others. I don't really use this one that much. I prefer my, my metal ring. This is by far my favorite one, but you can use this one by Olympus as well. This actually came in a kit. Um, that I had bought from them. It included the needle, the thread, and this in that kit. Some other thimbles I have are this one here. When I'm going this direction, um, it's just sometimes handy to have to push a needle the other way. The other reason why I love this one, I actually use this in knitting a lot because I tend to, I'm a continental knitter, and I tend to push on my needle and my chow goos are a little on the sharp side and so sometimes if I just don't feel like having that feeling on my finger I can use this. I also have this one um, either to pull on the needle um, I need to find my silicone ones. I have silicone ones too that work really well for getting a grip on pulling. Another item you'll want is a needle threader. So this is a cute little bee. Again, it came with the same little kit from Hobby Lobby. Um, this will help your eyeballs, especially like mine. You'll just need to make sure that the thread is the right size and it fits. So just put your needle threader through and you'll be able to pull your thread through the eye. Super, super easy. So I really love using a needle threader. Another thing I have in my kit are these cardboard bobbins. What's nice about these is they are much larger than your traditional embroidery bobbin, which I was really surprised to find um, 
in this section. You know, I expected these to be a lot smaller, but I was so happy that they they have the big ones because for sashiko thread, it's a much thicker thread. And what you'll be able to do is have a thread like this and you'll be able to wrap it on that bobbin after you open it. So there's a couple of different ways you can do your thread. One is a braid method and the other is to wrap it on a bobbin. bobbin. So I'll make sure to show both methods in an upcoming video as well. So as a review of what I have in my little go pouch that I can take in the car with me, I have some little coaster projects. Those coaster projects include thread, needle, fabric with a pattern already designed on them. No thinking for me. Extra cardboard bobbins. My magnetic needle keeper. Some grip scissors. Whatever this tool is called, it just left my brain. <laughs> but I tear the stitches if I need to on the end, especially if I have like a basting stitch going around the border, that's really handy to remove that basting stitch. Thimbles of all different sizes, especially my favorite one is this, I think it's called a coin thimble. This one is my absolute favorite. This is one that can go on your finger here as well, just like the clover one. That one's in metal. And then I have a few in leather. These are from Clover. And I have this one, it's synthetic le leather from Olympus. My Sashko needles. And my cute little needle threader. All right, so that's it for my simple kit, the easy kit, uh, beginner basics for Sashko. Um, I'll have more tutorials about this on my channel. I'll be demonstrating these actual coasters here shortly. I will be recording those videos and posting them. Um, also, in the next video, I'm going to show you some more advanced items, like bigger kits with grids where you draw your own design. This is actually a kit um, you can also get on Amazon. Um, also, how to properly unwind and store your thread. Much like yarn, there's a proper way to do that skein so that it doesn't end up a tangled mess. Um, also, what fabrics to use. I have some imported fabrics from Japan. Um, I'll also be sharing kits with you that I'm going to be drawing out and I'll be making. I'll be posting those in my coffee shop. So these are all different things that I'll be featuring here soon um, on this channel. So I hope you enjoy learning about Sashko just by watching the videos. But if you want to follow the journey with me and also do the stitch alongs with me, then please post a comment below and I'd love to hear from you and I'll see you on the next one.